About a month ago, I participated in the Brackies 2024 Game Jam. The theme for this jam was Calm Before the Storm, and so naturally, my team decided to make a game where the theme of the game revolves around the storm. Essentially, we made a platformer with the objective of collecting items before the storm hits and heading back home during it. This alone wasn't that great of an idea for the game, so we thought of making the storm affect the player's freedom of movement to add a bit of challenge. As one of the programmers on the team, I took it upon myself to create the weather system in the game. I ended up making it in a way I was happy with, and so I'd like to share with you how I did it. It's not hard to do, and is highly adaptable to your needs, and it isn't dependent on any existing parts of our game, so you can make and test it in your own game right now. At first I thought about keeping it simple and just have a hard-coded, pre-programmed weather cycle. This was okay for a small jam game, but I wanted to make something that could work with more flexibility and control. Aside from the visual weather effects, we also wanted the weather to limit the player's movement. As an example, we made it so that the player can't grab onto walls when it's raining, and we also made the wind push the player based on the direction and speed it's blowing. So let's talk about how it works. For the weather system itself, there are only 5 scripts which we'll be taking a look at first. As for any extra game specific effects we might want to add, that's completely up to you, and I'll show you what I did in our game and how I went about it afterwards. This weather system uses a hierarchical approach. We have a weather parameter script at the bottom, which will be used to control the values of our current weather. You can think of this as the final state of the weather we want. This is what we'll use to transition between weather states gradually over time. We'll have our current weather parameters and our target parameters. Next we have our three essential scripts that each play their own roles in controlling the weather system. We have our weather state script which is responsible for changing the current type of weather and it also takes note of the current weather state. So for example, it can change the weather from sunny to rainy and it will remember that the current weather is rainy. The script can be used by other related scripts to get information about the current state of the weather. We also need some kind of trigger or activator script to notify the weather system to change weather states. This can be done in all kinds of ways. The weather can be changed based on the player's location, environmental conditions, or in our case, a simple timer. Since our game is about having a set weather cycle going from nice calm weather to a stormy weather, our timer will tell our weather system to move on to the next weather state in the cycle when it hits zero. And of course, we need to visually show the player the changes in the weather. This can be done in a number of ways, either by using particles or with some art animations, and we chose to do it with particles, mainly because it's something I've never done before and I wanted to learn it. These three scripts will be controlled by our weather system script. This is our weather manager, so to speak, and it is what will talk with our timer to change the current weather state, which in turn will display a different weather effect. The main way our scripts will talk to each other is through events. Events are a great way to have scripts communicate without actually communicating. Instead, they act as alerts or notifications to scripts who are interested in receiving them. Data can be passed through events too, which makes it useful when you have to do something specific based on that data. As an example, when the weather state script changes the current weather state, it can notify the other script that it has done so and tell them what the new weather state is. Based on this information, our weather effects script can change the visuals to match the new weather state. Before we get into any code, let's first take a look at the effects I'll be using. Like I said, I used Unity's particle system to create the weather effects in our game. I made some sun rays for when it's sunny, clouds for when it's cloudy, wind for when it's windy, rain for when it's rainy, and lightning when it's lightningy. <laughs> What's important here is that the particle system can be accessed with Unity's API through code, and it has a ton of variables we can edit at will which is great for gradually changing from one weather state to another visually. We can slowly bring in the clouds and get rid of the sun rays when it's shifting from sunny to cloudy, or we can gradually change the color of the clouds to get darker over time, indicating that it will rain soon. 
Now let's look at some code. Starting with our timer script, let's make a list of floats that will store the length of time each weather state will take. This is only for our simple jam game, but you can make this script act however you want in terms of timing and activating weather changes in your game. We'll have a timer variable that we will use to count down the time with an event that will be triggered whenever the timer reaches zero. We can also have some public get and set methods so that other scripts can interact with the timer if needed. Moving on to the weather state script, let's create an enum called state that will represent all of the possible weather states in our game. Your game might have other weather states such as snowy or sandstorms. In my case, I created a list of states to define an order for the weather cycle in our game, but this step isn't necessary and depends on if your game needs it. We also need an event that will get triggered when we change weather states to notify other scripts of the change, passing along the new state in the notification. Next, let's make a function that will cycle our weather states, and add some public methods that other scripts might find useful to call. And that's it for this script. The weather effect script is what will control the visuals of our weather in the game. So it's important that our effects don't just appear and disappear immediately. Just like in real life, we want our weather to gradually blend into the next weather state rather than a sudden switch in effects. To do this, we need to create a data structure that will allow us to slowly transition between certain values. So let's go ahead and make that. I'm gonna name this script weather effect parameters. And since this class is just for storing variable information, I'm gonna get rid of the mono behavior class extension and mark the class as serializable, which means Unity will show this class and its values in the inspector so we can edit them there if we want. I'll put things in here that I would like to control in the weather effects script. So things like emission rates for our particle systems, color for our clouds, and whether certain effects like sun rays or lightning will play. The emission rate for a particle system determines how fast the system plays. So for example, we can play our rain effect at twice the speed during stormy weather to make the rain fall faster, or we can play our wind effect faster to simulate stronger winds. In our weather effect script, we can now create weather effect parameters for each weather state in our game. We also need references to our particle systems that will serve as our visual effects. In my case, I made separate classes for each effect because apart from just visual effects, the weather in my game affects the player's movements too, which we'll get into later. And I do suggest making a class for each effect since you're probably gonna have things like sound effects or maybe some animations that need to be controlled through code that should be handled in a separate class file. And lastly, we need to keep track of our current weather parameters and our target weather parameters for when we want to change effects. Now for the functions, let's create a set weather effects function that takes in a weather state and sets the target parameters accordingly. This function will trigger our transitional function that will gradually change from our current weather parameters to the target parameters. This function is a coroutine. We use coroutines when we want to use loops in our game that should occur over time rather than in a single frame. Here we set a transition time, which you can adjust as needed and get a percentage of how much of that time has passed between 0 and 1. This acts as a kind of progress bar and we use this percentage to transition to our target parameters from 0% to 100%. The actual transitioning happens in our helper function that I named lerp weather effect parameters. Lerp is a term used that describes a linear transition between a starting point and a finishing point, rather than something non-linear like an ease-in or an ease-out. Without getting too complex, just know that it helps us transition between two points. In order for the lerp function to know how far we are into the transition, a variable t needs to be passed in. This is our percentage variable from our initial transition function. We create a new resulting weather effect parameter each time we call this function, and set our current weather effect parameters to it. Now we can pass our current parameters to another helper function that updates all of our particle systems to match these parameters. And with these roughly 100 lines of code, we have a functioning visual effect system in place. Finally, we need to connect all of these scripts together. Let's create a weather system script that will manage the other scripts we just made. 
First, let's reference our weather timer, weather state, and weather effects scripts. Our weather system will listen to the events in our weather timer and weather state scripts. When the timer expires, we can have our weather system tell our weather state script to cycle the weather. And when that happens, the weather state script will invoke its on weather changed event, and we can handle that in our weather system by telling our weather effect script to set a new weather effect, which starts the transitioning process. Congratulations! You have just learned how to make a simple but effective weather system for your game. And as promised, I'm going to show you an example of one of my weather effects to show you why it's a good idea to create separate classes for each effect. Let's take a look at my wind effect script. We can see that aside from just the visual representation of the wind that the particle system presents, I also have a wind zone that the player is inside of. This wind zone pushes the player in the direction the wind is blowing based on the speed of the particle system's emulation speed. In other words, if the wind is blowing fast visually, then the wind will affect the player's movement too. I also have functions that change which way the wind is blowing at random intervals, and I wrote conditions that turn the particle system on or off depending on the emulation speed of the particle system. Eventually I might also add some sound effects that will play when it gets really windy, so you can see how complex this is getting already. Having a class that controls all the effects for a specific weather effect is much more maintainable than writing it all in one big file, and not only does it make the main file have less lines of code, but it also separates the logic of all effects into their own scripts, which makes it easier when you're debugging and want to find out the source of a bug, for example. And that's all for this tutorial. I hope you learned something new. And if you like this video and want to see more like this from me, let me know with a like and a comment. I'll see you in my next video.